How's it going, everybody? A couple of weekends ago, we had George KG6VU on the Ham Radio Crash Course Saturday show and also the After Chat. And during the After Chat, where we answer a lot of Ham Radio questions live, the topic of the state of repeaters came up. And for some background, George is a proper maker amateur radio operator, right? He makes a station controller repeater controller system that is used in many repeaters, as well as he is the developer of Pactena. You can go to their website. I'll post links to all this stuff in the video description so you can check it out, as well as he's a host on the Ham Radio Workbench podcast. He always has really interesting insights, and I thought his kind of talk here and his discussion on what's the state of repeaters for amateur radio was really interesting. So let's take a uh, listen. God, not to, not to keep going down this rabbit hole, but maybe you have insider information. What's the story with repeaters these days? Because you hear all everybody, oh, repeaters are dead, they're a dying breed, blah, blah, blah. Like, has your demand of the repeater controllers remained the same, gone up, gone down? What, what's, what's your take on all that? Oh boy, that's a that's a big question. Um, I, I have a couple of observations. One is I think that the amount of interest in building repeater systems is probably not as high as it was like 30 years ago, but it's probably been pretty steady and flat over the last 20 years. I think the the biggest change is bringing digital systems uh, into the um, mainstream. So if you go back, you know, 10 or more years ago, digital repeaters were kind of an anomaly, you know, certainly 15 years ago. Um, and and they were kind of an odd thing. And now they're pretty mainstream. Um, I think what's happened is uh, many things. But one, one thing that's important, I think, is is the negative thing is that we have split the community up. I thought I'd jump in with a little bit of context for those listening. When we're talking about intertying and intercommunicating of radios to repeaters, we have to keep in mind that the major brands generally have a digital mode they favor, and they don't interconnect with each other. So a D-Star repeater won't talk to Yaesu System Fusion. P25 repeaters don't really do Yaesu System Fusion or D-Star. DMR can kind of play in a little bit of different sandboxes, but... Generally, when you have a repeater that does a specific mode, they don't intertie very well. Now, there are some repeater networks like the PAPA system here in Southern California where you, where you can actually intertie between different repeaters, but you usually have to leverage the internet to bring that linking together. Uh, it doesn't always work perfectly, and there are some instances where repeaters just aren't that uh, robust that you can have them all interconnected. But keep in mind that when you buy a specific radio, you're generally locked in to that specific digital mode. There are exceptions, which I'll talk about later at the end of the video, but keep that in mind as George continues. So in the old days, everything was FM, Everybody had a radio that would work on any system. Right. And it was like the only difference was my repeater, your repeater, or whatever. Um, but now there's entirely isolated subgroups. So you've got the DMR guys, the Fusion guys, the D-Star guys, and the Analog FM guys, uh, some of them on All-Star or not, uh, and, and, the, and then other you know more peculiar modes like P25 and NXDN, et cetera. So all that does is it chops everything up. And so... Like in when I ran the repeater systems I built out in the Bay Area, uh, we had three FM repeaters at two sites linked together. Then we added a D-Star repeater. Then we added a Fusion repeater. Then we added a DMR repeater. And by the time we got to putting up the DMR repeater, we pretty much cut our membership into four quadrants. And, you know, we had four little clubs <laughs> because the repeater was like the common ground. And now there's four isolated areas. Mm -hmm. And and I, I I acknowledge that there's ways to bridge these systems together, but that's for you know kind of more super active users, not casual users. So I think that balkanization is really a problem. I think that's really a, that's a sad thing. And I'm all for innovation, you know, try different modes and all that. But it it's really a, a pity that they're all quite isolated for the most part. Um, so I think the activity is probably what it was 20 years ago, but it's in harder places to find. I can see that, like we've distributed the load, if you will, so there's less people. Because it's it's such a local community thing when it comes to repeaters, and if you've yeah. got some repeaters that are just doing a specific digital mode, we've now chopped that up significantly, and so that community just starts getting smaller and smaller, and they don't exactly. intertie well together. So yeah, I, I can see that, that's a good point. 
But what I have seen on the FM side is uh, I don't th I don't see FM repeaters going away. A lot of the I would say a lot of the growth has been in digital where there's new digital systems coming up. And of course, there's examples where people like flip their analog repeater into a digital repeater. But um, a lot of the digital repeaters are adding on to the, the local repeater scene more so than replacing them. There's a lot of stuff that are like dual mode repeaters, like you can get um, a fusion repeater and now an ICOM D-Star repeater where you can switch between analog and digital mode. And the funny thing is like with the fusion repeaters, the number of fusion repeaters went really uh, up pretty quick. And I would say 90% of the people I talked to who bought the fusion repeaters aren't using it in digital mode. They're using it in analog mode because mm -hmm. they got them cheap because EAC was bombing the price to get them ex you know, sold. So, yeah. you know, anyway, it, there's a bunch of random comments. I think in the, it, what I've seen in the repeater controller space is that there's fewer and fewer companies making repeater controllers. Um, it, it, it's not, it's not a, it, believe me, it is not a place where you're going to make a living. It's right. the sort of thing you do because you want to do it. And if you could do it and not lose money, then you're a success. Um, but it ain't no place to, to make a living, that's for sure. And, and you've seen a lot of the repeater controller companies go out of business. Is so, it, and the only reason we, we do it is because we didn't need to do it to make a living. Yeah. Is the repeater scene still like, or has it, has it throttled down to just a couple of major manufacturers being the go-tos or is it people just kind of find what they like and then they go with that? Like I remember there used to be a lot of Motorola uh, repeaters in and around here, but I think that's kind of dwindled to some degree, probably still with the analogs, but I know people have largely branched off to other things. What's, what's kind of been the, the flavor? Do you know? I would, I would say that it's similar still. Um, I mean, if you're putting up an analog or obviously a DMR repeater, you can go with a commercial repeater like a Motorola repeater. What I what, but I would add that um, the number of people that know how to work on repeater equipment, I think, is going down. Sure. And um, you know, and that's true in the commercial world, not just the ham radio world, but it's it's true in public safety. Um, you know, radio technicians are hard to come by. Microwave technicians hard to come by. So. I th I think the one thing that digital is uh, is is easier than analog to put up a system. So today, let, let's say you want to put up a, a DMR repeater. You, you know, you go write a big check, you get a box, uh, you plug in the Ethernet cable, you plug in your coax connector, you you pull up the programming software, and in ten minutes you're done, mm -hmm. and it just works. And right. there's nothing to do. Uh, if you have an analog repeater, um, it it takes. If you buy a commercial off-the-shelf one, it, you know it's not much more complicated than that. But it, if you really want it to sound good, it takes a little work. If you integrate it into an external control system, it takes work to make it sound good. If you want to connect multiple uh, radios together because you're doing analog FM radio linking or VOIP linking, it takes work to make the audio sound good. You don't have any of those problems with digital because it masks all that out. Um, so you never get to the audio stream in a digital repeater. It's it's just obscured from you completely yeah so that's actually easier to put up a dmr repeater than it is to put up a fm repeater and make it sound good it's kind of a yeah. self-fulfilling prophecy you know in the early repeater days when it was novel it was an exciting thing and there were very few repeaters so you know kind of like gmrs you know in in the in the la area on two meters there were you know maybe on every frequency there was a repeater but that's before they even had the splinter frequencies um but there was really like a dozen big repeaters and that was like it and and like today well every frequency's got three repeaters and in, in la and on uhf every frequency's got multiple repeaters on it so and it, are there that many hams not really i think it's just because it's like you know hey i want to put up my repeater and well okay and then it carves cool. off more people there's more choices so well, I got licensed back in 72, and the first time I did any stuff on repeaters was in the late 70s. And and then, like, in your car, you, you didn't have it. That, that was it. Either you were a ham or mm -hmm. not, right? Maybe you had a CB radio, but there's really no other alternative. And, and today, there's, you know, the, the zillion things you could use with your phone. The same is true, like, in the TV world. You know, when I was a kid, you had, like, seven channels, and everybody watched the same TV show. Mm -hmm. And right. today, everybody's got 600 channels, and you watch two of them, and guarantee they're not the same two that somebody else watches. So there's everything is like highly splintered, and right. so I think you kind of see the same thing in repeaters. It's just it's highly splintered. 
And by the way, we also don't always do ourselves a big favor. There's plenty of repeater systems like uh, that I know, certainly in other parts of the country, where you show up if you're a visitor and people don't treat you very well. You know, I mean, there's no room for that in this hobby, yet that happens. So, you know, we're not also not very good ambassadors sometimes um, mm -hmm. uh, yes. to new people. And yeah. Josh, and Josh has a whole segment on his uh, podcast about that. <laughs> yes, I do. If you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, oh, amateur radio's cooked, it's done, I don't think that's the case at all. I think that the general use of repeaters has gone up just statistically with there being more hams than there ever has been. But I think that people are getting interested in different things within amateur radio and repeaters maybe have less of that draw that uh, kind of it did in the past, right? Like we don't have phone bank connection anymore. Yeah, you used to be able to use your handheld to a repeater to call somebody. We don't do that anymore. Everybody has cell phones, right? So I think that um, the, the, using, the use of a repeater as kind of like the, the canary in the coal mine, the state of health, if you will, will on amateur radio in general, I think is, is something that it doesn't work anymore. It's not, a, it's not a good indicator. So even though I think that repeaters may be flatlined, and that's not dead, that means that the, there's not really a surge in interest. I think it just is the status of the way things are technology-wise. It's it's not really a sign that amateur radio is hurting because people are finding other valuable things to do with their time, like HF, like Parks on the Air. I think if you ask me, the amount of people on HF has grown immensely versus the last five years, 10 years, and even a little bit more, like decades in the 90s. But those are my opinions. So to wrap this up, I think it's important to make a point that there is no one reason why repeater activity is on the decline or, or stagnant. Stagnant's probably a better word. We are splitting the population using different digital modes. Repeaters can be very niche. There can be clickish for sure. And sometimes people can just be bad, at, uh, bad actors on the air when they're on the repeater. I think that there are situations where all of that is taking place. But there's one thing that George didn't bring up that I, I want to make a point on. And that's these guys, these hot spots, these open spots. I think this is now this is me talking. I think that a lot of amateur radio operators are moving to hot spots. These internet devices will take whatever digital mode you throw at it and then via a connection to the internet go to that internet connected talk group. Yesu System Fusion, DMR, D-Star, etc. So you use this kind of babblefish device, this universal translator, to get to larger numbers of people. Yes, it's it's connected over the internet it's not truly you know radio to radio or radio repeater to radio but i think people are getting around some of that clickish behavior and the, maybe the bad actors by going straight to the internet via hotspot now there's nothing wrong with this and in fact OpenSpot just released a version of their device that has a microphone on it you can just use this directly almost like a Star Trek communicator. That's another important thing to keep in mind is that a lot of people are just saying, no, that's okay. I, I won't connect to my local repeater. I don't own it. Maybe I don't like the talk groups that, that the repeater owner has set up or said we can or can't use. I'd just rather be able to control it on my own instead of putting up a big old repeater and controlling the community that way that comes to their repeater. They're just going to go straight to the internet with this device or devices like it. Hey, um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Really do appreciate it. We, As I mentioned, we do the HRCC after chat. Usually starts about 6 p.m. Saturdays, and we take your questions live. If you haven't heard about it yet, we'd love if you come out, take a look at what we're doing, maybe ask a question to see if we can help you out in amateur radio. I'd also really love to hear your comments below on this video. Really do appreciate your feedback, and maybe you're going to give us an idea we didn't really think about on what is affecting the state of amateur radio repeators? I'm Josh KI6NAZ73.